What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com back with another Blender add-on tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're going to check out Archipack Pro. So Archipack is one of the best add-ons you can find for adding architectural items into Blender. So things like walls and windows and kitchen cabinets and roofs, other things like that. So in today's video, we're gonna take a look at the Pro version and some of the features that are contained in here. Um, if you like what's going on in this tutorial, Tutorial, um, leave a comment below. Let me know what else you'd like to see about Archipack because I can talk about more in the future. But for now, let's just go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so you can find Archipack by going to the Archipack website, which I will link to in the notes down below. And so when you go to that website, you're going to see some information about Archipack. The first thing you're going to notice is there's two different options for Archipack. So there's the free version and there's a paid version. And so there's actually information on the features page about the difference between the two. So right now, for example, there's a free version, then there's the version that's the 49 euro version. And you can see how the free version contains things like the walls, doors, slabs, fences, so a bunch of the base functions in here. And then there's a bunch of other functions that are in here with the, uh, with the pro version. There's a bunch of other features that are in here with the paid version that make things a lot easier. So things like auto manipulation on object selection. That one is great because when you click on an object, it automatically allows you to manipulate it. There's a bunch of other things in here as well, but I will link to this page so that you can see exactly what the difference is so that you can download this and give it a try. But now let's jump over into Blender and take a look at some of the features. So the first thing is you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you install and enable Archipack Pro. And one thing you wanna do is you want to set a folder path for the materials that come along with Archipack. And so in particular, there's a material library file that you wanna download and that you wanna place in whatever folder you link to over here so that your materials are going to show up inside of Blender. So there's some other tools in here as well for customizing the way that this looks. But for right now, let's go ahead and let's just, uh, let's get started looking at the tools. And so what Archipack does is it adds a number of different tools that you can add to your model by doing a Shift A inside of Blender. And so it adds a mesh set of options under Archipack. Notice this is the pro version. If you're using the free version, you're gonna have less options in here. But let's start by drawing a wall. And so the easiest way to do that is gonna to be to add a wall object. Notice how when you do that, that's gonna give you a collection in here that should be automatically created when you install this so that you can pick a couple different kinds of walls. In this particular case, we're gonna pick the inside 10 by 240. And so first off, let's take a look at our units because right now for me, these are set as inches because my model units are set as inches over here in my scene properties. If you wanna change that, you can go into scene properties and use the different uh, dimensions in here, the dimension options. So if you use metric, you can switch this to metric. If you wanna use feet, you can switch this to feet. Notice how the units are changing when our scene properties change. And so let's start by taking a look at the different options that are in here. So right now you can see how when I click on this wall, I'm getting options in here to adjust things like the height, things like the length, other things like that. So you can set things like wall height by selecting something and then typing a value. So for example, I can click on this and then type a value in and hit the enter key in order to set that value. So if I wanted this wall to be 15 feet long, for example, I could click on it and I could type in 15 feet. Alternatively, you can also click and drag in order to place this, and you can use this to drag that along the axis, or you can also click and drag the box in order to place this manually. So I usually don't use that function. I usually use the uh, length function right here because um, what that does is that kind of messes up my orientation of my wall. Now, one thing that might help with that is you might turn on your snapping and your snapping is really gonna help you with that. So you can see how the snapping allows you to snap to the different grid points inside of your model. So that's something to consider as well if that's uh, something that you'd really like to see. You can also adjust the thickness of the wall using this arrow right here or by typing in a value. So let's say I wanted this to be six inches. I could click on it, type in a value of 0.5 
and my wall now have a thickness of 0.5 inches. And so now let's talk about how to add segments to our wall. And so we're gonna start by setting this back to 15 feet. And now let's say that we wanted this wall to turn. Well, what we want this to do is we want this to have an additional wall segment that turns 90 degrees. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna click on this arrow right here and click here and type in a value. I believe this is probably gonna be negative 90 and hit the enter key. And so what that does is that gives us a second segment that turns 90 degrees at this corner point. And so we can use this to quickly add segments to our wall. So for this one, for example, we would set this one to 90 degrees. We could set this one to negative 90. That is one thing to note is try to be careful with this because if you accidentally turn one of these wall segments, you have to go back in there and adjust it. And then you're probably going to have to adjust your lengths as well. That's one thing I wish this didn't do is if you set these points in here, what this does is this adjusts your lengths based on the points that have already been placed in here. So what you want to do is you want to start from one end and work your way across. So um, you don't really want to start from the other end and work backwards because that doesn't work as well. But type in a value of negative 90. So one thing to note about um, those of you using the free version is if I tap the N key and go into the Archipack menu, um, there's a function in here for the pro version called auto manipulate and what that means is that means that when you click on this wall You're gonna automatically be able to manipulate it for those of you with the free version that may not work You may need to click on your object and then come in here and click on the button for manipulate in order to get these back So I'm gonna leave auto manipulate on but if you ever need to get those back come in here and look for the manipulate function and so I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna adjust the rest of these in order. And then I'm gonna add one last wall. I'm gonna set that length to 30 feet. So now my walls have been placed inside a blender. One cool thing about this is you can come in here and adjust the height of all the walls at once using the manipulator over here. You can also adjust that inside of your Archipack settings, which you can activate by tapping the N key on your keyboard. All right, so now let's say that this is what we want our house to look like. Well, now let's add some doors and windows. So one cool thing about this tool is it comes with doors and windows that automatically place openings. So for example, if I do a Shift A, well, first off, I wanna select this wall. Then I wanna do a Shift A, go to Archipack and click on door. And so this is gonna give me a number of different door options that I can bring in. So for example, let's bring in this outside 100 by 200 door. So when I click on this, notice how when I mouse over these wall objects, this locks to these walls right here. And if I click, notice how this is automatically gonna cut an opening for this door. So that's a really cool function because it means I don't have to come in here and do it manually. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna right click and I'm also gonna add a window. So Shift A, Archipack, Window. And there's a number of different windows in here as well. So let's go ahead and just pick something simple like this one. I'm just gonna mouse over my wall and click. And so the cool thing about this is if I click on the frames for these objects, they're adjustable. So for example, let's say I want this door to be seven feet high. I can just click on this and set the height as seven feet. I can also type in a value of three feet for a width. And then the same thing is gonna happen with my window over here. So I can adjust this so that it has a four foot width. I can set my height above ground. And I can set my overall height just by adjusting these things right here. Notice there's a number of other things you can adjust with these as well over here in the Archipack menu. So things like the kind of window that it is, if it's a hung window, if it's a swing window, as well as Things like, if I want this window to be divided, I can add different divisions in here by adjusting these settings right here. So you can also adjust the individual parts and pieces in here. So for example, I could turn this exterior sill on and off just by clicking right here. So I could also add shutters so all of these 
are adjustable as well. And so we can get in depth on some of this stuff more in a future video if there's stuff you guys have questions on. Um, but let's go ahead and keep moving for right now. So our door type, notice how you can adjust things like your open angle of your door as well as the different parts and pieces here. So you can turn your handle on and off. You can adjust the number of panels in here. So very adjustable. So in addition, you can also add slabs or floors. So for example, let's say I wanted to add a floor in here. You could add the object like this. And then you can also inside of your shape settings, you can add additional segments. So let's say for example, on segment three, you wanted this to come down and turn around this corner. Well, you could just go to segment three and click the plus button right here. Well then, so I could set my length right here. So then I could add another segment, drag it out here, and I could just place this floor object really quickly inside a blender. So I can drag this over to my corner and on segment two, we'll just add another one of these and drag this over. So I'm finding those points are the easiest way to set things inside of Archipack's some um, flat objects like floors is just by dragging those points right there. Um, just note, you may have to do a little bit with snapping. So for example, you may want to turn this so that it snaps to vertices. So then when you drag these in here, it'll actually snap to the corners of your walls. So then there's also some other functions like the roof function, where you can quickly add a roof to your model. And so you can come in here and you could set your axis so that this roof is working along the axis right here. You can also manipulate it in the same way. But you do end up using the move tool a lot more with this one. But then there's some other settings in here as well, like triangular ends that you can adjust to make different kinds of roofs. I think there's a way to intersect the roofs together. I'm not 100% clear on that one, but um, I believe there's a way to do that. And then if you go into your parts, you can enable or disable things like the covering that goes on top of this. All right, then there's a few other tools, which I don't want to talk about too much in this video, but things like um, blinds, there's a kitchen function that allows you to add a whole kitchen in here. So if we were to fly into our building and take a look at this, you can click on this kitchen and you can adjust some of the different options that are in here. So things like with the different cabinets, notice those cabinets all show up numbered so that you can click over here and adjust each one of the cabinets individually. So if I wanted to adjust cabinet 11, for example, then I could adjust my width and everything else about that cabinet inside of this tool. Somehow I got number 10 instead of 11, but you get the idea. So these are fairly adjustable. I find the way that they adjust to be a bit clunky, um, not too bad, but um, it can be hard to make this look exactly the way that you want. But at the same time, it gives you a lot of different things you can adjust so that you're not modeling out these cabinets manually. So that's kind of an overview of the different features you can find inside of Archipack Pro for Blender. Um, I'd love to talk about this more in the future. I think there's probably some things we could do with creating floor plans and other things like that that could really make everyone's lives a lot easier when it comes to modeling in Blender with Archipack. But if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, so make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.